go back to the point of refuse to be stuck in your ways you need to understand there are reasons why you do the things you do there are reasons why you think the way you do don't just accept the inner self-talk and the um, derogatory way you speak to yourself and the things that you do as just who you are and just who you've always been Hi guys, welcome back to my YouTube channel. My name's Fajira and you guys are watching Fajira Talks. I have always wanted to do a video on healing and I thought it would just be so beneficial to incorporate this video in my Better You series. So I've done a few videos on motivation, I've done a few videos on reinventing yourself, rebranding, trying not to self-sabotage, stuff like this that is going to allow us to become the best version of ourselves. There's no one in this world who hasn't gone through some past trauma, who hasn't gone through hurt, but of course with any video that you watch on YouTube that is you know tailored to healing and bettering yourself you have to take what we're saying and actually just look at it with the mirror of your life and see what applies to you and reject things that don't apply to you I feel like when it comes to healing there's so many different things that you could be healing from you could be healing from grief you could be healing from experiences with parents siblings teachers physical encounter that should not have happened you could be healing from so much hurt and shame and pain um, and what I want to say first of all is that some of these things of course we can do videos about we can talk about and we can of course apply like self-help strategies which I hope this video will um, elaborate on but a lot of the things that we want to heal from we can only heal with therapy counseling and going down the route of talking to someone about it and that will alleviate a lot of the stress and actually allow us to bounce off ideas of self-improvement with another person or another professional so if that is something that you you need then definitely definitely do not ignore that prompting to seek professional help if you're not at that stage where you want to seek professional help yet or if you want to just exhaust all the things that you can do to heal yourself before you go to a professional then this video is actually perfect for you I'm still in my early 20s but there's a lot of things that I'm noticing as I'm going on this journey of self-reflection and improving myself there's a lot of things that i'm noticing that i keep on doing like repeated behaviors whether it's repeated feelings or repeated thoughts or repeated self-talk and so i sat down with myself and i started to self-reflect and a lot of the things a lot of the behaviors that i was exhibiting for example one of them being jealousy it is reasonable to feel a healthy proportion of jealousy towards maybe friends people that you love basically um, it is normal to feel a healthy sense of jealousy but with me I would say a repeated pattern of this kept on coming up in the way that I would feel so protected and guarded over my friends and I'd feel so jealous when they spent time with other people um, in their lives who of course they have absolutely every right to but I kept on noticing that I kept on feeling inadequate and I kept on feeling like I had a lower self-worth because people wouldn't spend time with me and I had to dig deep into where did this pattern come from where did it start from and I realized it was from my past and you know moving around a lot moving countries moving schools never really feeling like I had a friendship group until I was about the age of like 16 17 where I was in A levels and I was you know I had a little group that I was you know vibing with and friends with whatever but when I was younger I always felt like the odd one out a lot of the time in secondary school and primary school I just kept on feeling like I didn't have a place it wasn't that anyone in particular said anything to me it wasn't that anyone in particular you know bullied or was outrightly you know derogatory or demeaning to me whatsoever but it was just that repeated cycle of feeling alone that I harbored for so many years and so when I did find people that I was vibing with many years later I was still harboring those feelings of I'm not good enough I'm not worth it and um, when my friends um, would you know, spend time with other people I think it would literally resurface all of those emotions from the past again and I would feel jealousy but I really didn't know that it was basically the, the little girl inside me thinking oh there you are all alone again and it was it was really like a sobering process to go through to realize like it wasn't just trivial this is why I encourage any anyone and everyone to really spend time with yourself and go through self-reflection and don't take your thoughts as 100% facts or 100% real it is so important to look back into your life and see where there are cycles of behaviors feelings patterns and really dig deep 
as the first point I'm ever gonna say about healing. It's so important to know why you think the way that you do. But my next point, after you know why you think the way that you do, you need to refuse to be rigid, refuse to be stuck in your ways. A big, big part of this is um, something that I've mentioned in my videos about reinventing yourself and rebranding yourself. There is a huge part of society that wants to make us feel like we should be accepted just the way we are and that nothing has to change and the world will accept you just the way you are, you're fine. I think this is the most rubbish argument ever, especially when you're trying to improve yourself, especially when you're trying to grow on a self-growth journey. You don't ever want to feel or maintain the thought and the mindset that you are set in your ways. You need to refuse to be rigid. Life is full of changes and so your mindset, your behavior, your characteristics should also be tweaked in order to fit into the circumstances and situations of life and especially to be tweaked enough so that you can recognize what you were doing in the past will not suffer for who you need to be for the future that you are going into so that is a big big point is refuse to just accept that this is who you are the second thing that, that I'm gonna say in regards to this um, healing process is kind of tied into my first couple of points um, about refusing to be stuck in your ways I think it's so important to confront your past do not let your fears your emotions or the things that you feel the things that bubble up on random moments or when you're angry when you have a short fuse don't let those things be trivial to you don't just regard them as you know things that just happen and it's just the way i am go back to the point of refuse to be stuck in your ways you need to understand there are reasons why you do the things you do there are reasons why you think the way you do don't just accept the inner self-talk and the um, derogatory way you speak to yourself and the things that you do as just who you are and just who you've always been look at your life and see where these patterns have continued to appear over and over again. When I was doing that healing work of understanding why I felt so inadequate when I was in my own space, why I felt so uncomfortable when I was alone and when I wasn't part of a group, the majority of that was because I was able to pinpoint areas in my life and friendship groups in my life where I felt that feeling come up again and again, up to the earliest point that I've ever felt that feeling. And that was when I started to find out there was a cycle to this, there was a pattern to this. And that that is why I say this is such an important point is just to confront your past. Your past continues to live on your present but it lives on with emotions, with thoughts, with feelings, with the way that you see yourself. So don't think of your past as trivial, don't think about the things and the way that you react to situations as trivial. Use these things as ways for you to sit down with yourself and understand this is something that I cannot continue going on doing. You need to understand who you were at the worst in your life, at the most hurt, at the the most traumatized point of your life you need to understand that person in order to heal from that person you can't heal if you don't know what you're healing from you can't change if you don't know what you need to change and what you're changing from that my third point is a really really important point I'm a person that normally loves to offer love and offer like advice and support to other people friends of course like that are in my life that ask for advice and support like I am the listener type of friend you know but I rarely take the time to do it for myself and so my next point is that actually in your healing journey you need to start showing the love that you want to receive a big part of this is actually understanding that I need to start being more selfish with my time. I need to be more selfish with my energy. I need to be more selfish with my opinions and my thoughts and my values so that I'm redirecting that same energy that I want to receive from the world into myself. A lot of the times when I felt like people weren't checking in on me, people weren't you know, trying to find out how I was doing and no one really cares about me, it was because I was trying to look for attention from other people where I was not giving it to myself. People generally do not read minds. And so if you're feeling at a a, a stage in your life where you feel like no one's reaching out to you and no one's checking in on you and therefore you are not loved you're trying to jump into conclusions probably because you're not giving yourself the same attention that you need and there are so many reasons why that could be and it goes back into has this happened in the past is this a cycle is this a repeated behavior and so healing yourself it doesn't just stem from confronting your past but it actually stems from understanding what are you lacking right now how do you 
you get to that point where you love yourself enough to love your company, your space, your time? Is it forcing yourself to be comfortable with you when no one is around? And this point isn't just about showing the love that you want to receive to yourself, it's actually showing the love that you want to receive to other people as well. If you're the type of person to always be closed off and never really ask your friends about what they're doing and how their life is going and what's new in their life and really go and dig deep roots with your friends then you shouldn't accept those deep roots to automatically be established when you need checking in on when you need healing when you need support friendships are give and take and so a huge important part of healing is one showing the love that you want to receive to yourself but also showing the love that you want to receive to other people my fourth point is kind of a development of this. I love saying this. It's not just important to know who you've been and to know that you want to break out of that life cycle. It's also really important to know where you want to go. And my fourth point is to be really intentional with your life. And I say this because it's such an important point. You need to know where is this going to lead you? Where is this journey going to take you? What type of person do you want to become as a result of this? And I mentioned with my healing journey, a, well, one portion of my healing journey, which is this, you know, self-love story. Um, a portion of this is just understanding that I want to be someone who enjoys and values my space, my time, my company, even when I'm not around other people. If you get it, you get it. Definitely during this journey, I've realized that I'm in, when I'm in social circumstances or situations where, you know what, I'm sitting by myself, conversations are happening to the left and to the right of me, but I'm actually getting to a place where I'm so comfortable with not being involved in those conversations. <laughs> It sounds like such a small thing, but to me, like, that is so much progress. If you're intentional with yourself, if you're intentional with your journey, if you're intentional with the outcome, then you'll start to realize when you've made progress. I would say another kind of side to this is actually knowing what the purpose for your life is and knowing what do you want to do with your life. And if healing from, what you're healing from is going to push you closer to that purpose, it's even more motivation to, for you to get through that journey quicker. I think this is so important whenever we feel like we're hurt or we're unhealed and and we just have so much going on um, from our past, we start to really lose connection with who we want to be and we start to see that we're so many miles away from our end goal when in fact it's not that far off um, but we just need to be consistently reminding ourselves what our purpose is who we are doing this for. The last point is of course to take baby steps with your healing journey. It depends what you're healing from, the time frame that it's gonna take you to heal from it and who you are as a person. And like I said at the start, please take every single point I said with a pinch of salt to apply it to your own life and hold up a mirror to your life and see what applies to you. And like I said, to understand that yes, it's gonna take a lot of time. It's going to take so much energy and let's not underestimate the amount of energy it takes to heal from something. It takes a lot of energy, it takes a lot of time, it takes a lot of self-awareness. And so this journey, you won't just realize, okay, this is what I do and the next time I'm in a, a circumstance where that's my natural response, I just won't do it anymore. That's just not how it happens. You need to understand that there is some time that you're gonna give yourself, there is grace that you need to apply into your own life. With doing all of that and with confronting yourself and with understanding that yes, you are human and you might fall down during your journey more than once, more than a few times, you might um, find yourself slipping or regressing at some point, you might find yourself progressing much faster than you ever thought at other points. It is so important to just keep your eyes, like I said, on that intentional goal that you set for yourself that intentional desire to be someone who is fully in love with themselves, their space, their time, and whatever goal it is that you want to heal towards. So I hope this video has been helpful to you guys. And if it has, let me know in the comment section below what your tips, what things that you're doing to heal from past hurt, trauma, shame. And please, please, please do make sure to check out my other videos on self-improvement, reinventing yourself, motivating yourself, stopping self-sabotaging behaviors, because these are the things that are going to push you towards becoming a better version of yourself. Hence the title, The Better You Series. So I hope this video has been helpful like I said and if it has leave a thumbs up subscribe for more and I'll see you guys in my very next video bye